Hi, my name is Aaron, and I'm talking today um, about uh, Bridgeport Series 2 Hydraulic Tracer Mill. For those of you who haven't seen one before or know how to operate it, I'll be putting on a, a few videos on the setup and, and theory behind this machine. Uh, what it is, is it's a Bridgeport Series 2 platform. It's got a T-RAM up above, which enables you to have more than one milling head on it, actually up to three if you had space. Um, down below, the rather than screws, it's using a hydraulic type actuator um, for the X and Y axis. Z has a screw on it, but it also has hydraulic lift to enable it to go uh, up and down about six inches or so. And all that is run by a, a hydraulic unit that's in the corner that I'll show you here in a minute. This is the hydraulic um, system. It's got a five horsepower hydraulic pump on it and a large tank below. The True Trace emblem that you can see kind of in the middle here, uh, heart shaped, it's got a little sight glass to measure your, your fluid level of the reservoir. Reservoir is about 45 gallons of a mixture of hydraulic fluid and this large deal on the front here is just a cooler. Um, I've got it set up. I've never really used it much. The system never seems to get hot enough. I suppose over eight hours of time in a, in a hot environment you'd need to use that. Uh, it pretty much pumps coolant through there and then there's just a, a fan unit to blow some air to help cool the system. The system likes to be ran uh, and, it, and it runs better warm and so it doesn't take long, maybe 20 minutes to half an hour before the tank starts to, to get warm in the operating head. You can see in this shot that I've got the, the control head over here. It has on the bottom a stylus that's the same size and shape as your cutting bit. It would follow a pattern mounted on a vise or uh, just onto the table. This vise I've got situated for my right head to be used so I can follow a pattern and mill something with this right head in this vise. If I wanted to mill with two, then I would have to remove the, the little lathe that I've got up here on the, the bed and actually have two vises side by side. I've got the secondary milling head on so I, I can do some milling operations with the lathe and I've got some other items that I, I've shown in another video that I can um, I can attach some cutting bits inverted and actually trace a profile on the lathe. So, so this is the control head. All the hydraulic lines come from the hydraulic unit in the corner and they come up through this, through the top, through the lines. It's controlled through multiple spool valves that will direct that flow either into one end of the cylinder or back. Some of the controls that we have on here are some lockouts. These are the X and the Y lockouts. This lockout here locks both of those out. So you can actually, you can lock one side and travel in the X um, without really affecting the Y too much. This is a Z lockout for up and down. Uh, this is a feed rate and it goes from 0 to 100. It doesn't really represent uh, much of a speed travel. You'd have to, to kind of get the feel for your speeds. You can do some measurements and then and set that according to, to what you're machining. Um, so the numbers don't really represent much, but it gives you a gauge. Down below, there's a vertical error on and off. I'll get into that later. This is a stylus pressure. There is air uh, that actuates this, and so this um, this sets up your stylus pressure. For it's like a back pressure. There is a vertical stylus pressure as well for doing 360 degree um, stuff. Your main valve for the air on and off here, and then the steering comes into play for for um, steerage. This automatically traces around a pattern once you get it set up and running warmly and, and it can be kind of quirky for a little bit once it goes and you get get it set up and warmed up it'll go all day. On the far side here there is a climb and mill option 
and that determines which way it will automatically trace around. Uh, down here there's a, uh, forget what it's called, it's a, it's like a deflection ring. If you picture there's a, there's a cone on the inside of this and this basically affects how far this, this will travel.